have a number of people who are um, uh, uh, practicing um, uh, pharmacy without um, uh, the relevant uh, qualifications or the licensing. Uh, and this is one of the exercise that the board is going to participate as part of the ministry efforts uh, to ensure uh, that Kenyans are able to access uh, facilities that have uh, the right personnel to practice, uh, facilities that have the right practices, and facilities that are able to uh, provide the quality of care uh, that is advocated within the the constitutions and the health act uh, it is an exercise uh, that the the cabinet secretary has actually put it uh, into a rapid response initiative so within the next 90 days uh, beginning from the 6th of this month uh, 90 days from then uh, the country is going to be subjected into a very rigorous uh, exercise of inspecting all health facilities, and I say all health facilities is the chemist, the laboratory, the nursing homes, the clinics and the hospitals, whether private or government, uh, to ensure that all of them are subjected to the same standardized tool uh, and ensure that uh, the infrastructure, uh, the services that is being provided, uh, the personnel who are working there, uh, the issues of uh, medical waste disposal, uh, and tiered uh, uh, to, uh, to that. And no doubt that facilities that do not meet these standards would definitely need to be closed. There's no question about that, unless you are able to, uh, uh, to, meet, meet, to meet those standards. We have a stakeholder engagement. We have just had a, a meeting this morning with the county government. And basically is how then can the board be able to work very closely with the county governments uh, to ensure uh, uh, that um, uh, these premises that provide services uh, really are known to the county government, but also to be able to keep on monitoring uh, on what is happening. If there are new ones that are coming, really are they licensed? Are they, uh, do they have the right personnel? And also to enforce uh, on, on, on the issue of the matters of closure. If we say this facility needs to be closed, it has to remain closed uh, uh, for that matter. That is our mission as, as a board and as um, uh, our contribution mission to the large exercise that the Ministry of Health and the Government is doing to ensure that the facilities that are, uh, you are able to access uh, are really uh, meet uh, or conform uh, to the set standards. For example, last year, 2018, um, I think the board was able to do um, more than 3,000 inspections and we were able to close more than 700 uh, chemist outlets. Uh, and I think this is where we need our stakeholders. The ones that have been closed, how do we ensure that they are kept closed and that Wanaiji are not able to, uh, and not able to uh, access services there? But the most important thing that as a board we are doing, and it's also part of the ministry efforts, is to ensure that Wanaiji are well educated. They have the correct information uh, on where to access uh, a service, a services. So public communication is going to be uh, very, very key and very, very critical. And this health safety code is supposed to be used by members of the public to verify the information about that particular premise, uh, where it's located, who is supposed to offer pharmaceutical services in that particular premise, and whether the licensing status is valid or not. So it's a code uh, for pharmacists, it starts with P, and for pharmaceutical technologists, it starts with PT. So, and it's a free SMS service, so members of the public using their phone are able to enter uh, this particular code for that particular premise and send an SMS to 2301. Okay, and it's free of charge. And then they get a feedback immediately, instantly, on, in, their form, in their phones about the status, uh, the, the name of the personnel licensed to offer services there, the location of that particular outlet, as well as the name of that particular outlet.